Hey guys, welcome back to the series where we are building an overland vehicle but on a budget and today we have had a delivery which is pretty exciting to be honest uh, one of my favourite parts of any four wheel drive build or overland build It feels like Christmas <laughs> It certainly does, so see if you can guess we're going to get straight into it unboxing these and yeah let's see what we have eh? I'm sure most of you know already. Well done. It <laughs> says Tony. We have a coil spring. Whoa. Not that fast. Even chickens came to see. So a big thank you to Euro 4x4 Parts for sending all this out. I got oh, you finally oh. got one out. <laughs> so this has literally got to be one of my favourite parts of any overland build, setting up the suspension. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, I just really enjoy this part of the process, you know, getting things sort of set up right. Uh, it feels so much better when you're off-road and on the road to be fair, like, um, and you know, just making the car that much more comfortable and capable all in all. So yeah, here we are, we have our suspension and um, you know, I'm going to break down all the costings involved with this part of the build so you know st stick around to the end where we'll go through in detail you know what everything costs also guys do let us know what's your favorite part about overland build yes is it the suspension like us or is it you know setting up your wheels and tires doing yeah. the servicing and maintenance of the vehicle whatever it, it is the overland gear i don't know let Ex us know exactly everyone's different and everyone likes different things um also <laughs> Do give us a like um, and subscribe if you're not already. It really does help our channel. And it thank does. you so much for your continued support. We really do appreciate so it. So let me outline exactly what we have here and what we've chosen. Um, big thank you to Euro 4x4 Parts for sending all this gear out from France. Um, it arrived mm. really quick and everything. So yeah. yeah, it was quick. It was really speedy it was. delivery. Impressed. They got some nice little gifts too. So I can see I got my keychain. Out my you hadn't guessed already. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you. And um, right, so what do we have here? Well, the main thing, as um, you might have noticed in some of the previous videos, is we were suffering with a standard suspension, was the sag on the rear. Now that we've added all that extra weight and things, so we really need to get some sort of lift, especially in the back, and uh, you know something more heavy duty to cope with that weight Big when time. we do eventually get into the rough stuff. So. I'm going to start off by showing you these. These are a King Spring, so you know King's Australia. Uh, these are a heavy duty 50 millimeter lift and they are a plus 200 kilogram load rating. So you can go for more, you can go for like 350 or 450. But that's getting sort of too heavy then because you know if you haven't, if you're not fully loaded, then you can start getting a bit too hard on the suspension, a bit uncomfortable. So I think 200 kilos is going to be a good all round you know to, to use this vehicle because it's not particularly heavy but it's got probably a steady at least you know 200 to 250 kilograms um, constant weight when we're loaded up ready for a trip these are the front springs so you know on these cars it's a, a coilover type so they, they sit over well, front strut so they sit over the actual shock itself 50 millimeter lift also uh, standard um, standard weight rating because uh, those at the front there's no there's not a lot of extra weight at the front uh, we're not running heavy winch bumpers mm -hmm. and winches and things like that so it's okay with the standard weight um, but plus 200 kilos in the rear our shocks that we've gone for we've gone for Kony Kony is a recognized brand and these were available at the time at a reasonable price which we'll get into later so stay tuned um, front shock and rear shocks um, 
they allow up to a 60 millimeter lift and we've got a 50 millimeter lift so they're going to be pretty much spot on you know uh, big bore heavy duty shock so this combination of gear what with the king springs and the coney shocks i was recommended by somebody at euro 4x4 who reckons this will be a, a decent setup mm. everything was available off the shelf which was fantastic because it's actually quite hard to get parts at the moment mm. you, know, you probably noticed there's a lot there's a, a big um shortage in parts and there's a long waiting list for most things so global all this being readily available quality shocks quality springs at a you know reasonable price point in the range which of course we'll get into later i can't wait it's so exciting actually it's like seeing all these things here on on the table and just soon they're all right. going to be in there and i can't wait the transformation but anyway enough talking time to actually get this stuff on and of course we're going to be doing it ourselves because you know we're going to save money that way being the budget overland build uh, yeah. we've, we've purchased the items but we're actually going to get to it and fit all this stuff together yeah exactly <laughs> i love it it's actually a re or is it going to be mostly me well no it's me actually doing all the work and jack's pretending so <laughs> this is how uh, it rolls <laughs> we'll see how we go Funny story, well, not so funny. It's about three days later now. You know, we were trying to put these on with our little spling clamps, but it it was kind of like, no, this is not going to happen, and it didn't feel right. It was scary as hell. So <laughs> I decided to head down to town, get someone to press these on, which we thought would be the easy option. Turns out it wasn't. Basically, we had made the mistake. These, if you see these spring seats, um, they came in a separate bag. Obviously, we put them on the other way around. I suppose you can, it's adjustable in the way you could have it either way around for the height, but at the time didn't think of it, gave it to the, the mechanic to, to press the, the springs onto the strut. And um, obviously that being the way around, put it up about here, probably about, I don't know, I don't know, 50 mil higher, probably more than that, 100 mil, because um, it's double if you swap it around. Uh, so basically there was no way he could get it on even with the machine where he could compress it just enough, but it, there was no gap to get the machine out and that would have been rock solid. So going back to the, the boardroom, finding out what the problem was, took us a couple of days, but we got there in the end, speaking to the tech team at Euro 4x4, figured out we had that the wrong, the wrong way around. So 
back down to the garage on Monday with that the right way around. Springs are on, both, both struts are built up now, so I can uh, go and actually put these in the car now. It's a three day ordeal, but um, I'll be pleased to get this part finished, that's for sure. Oh, um, yeah, so <laughs> the struts, they're back in. Woohoo! Win. Um, decided, well, found out that some of these ball joints a bit past their best as well, so changing the top ball joints. I'm also going to change the bottom one on this side um, because, well, I'll show you in a minute. It's got some play in it. I'll show you how to identify that. Um, yeah, but pleased things are coming back together now. If you watch the ball joint, as I do this, you'll see. See that movement? On this one literally has no nothing left to it. There's no feel at all, it's just loose as anything. Um, and yeah, when that was on there, you could see that had play in it too. So that's gonna new ones going on. Yeah, so we'll have to update the cost of the servicing and maintenance parts because we've added a few more things to that, the ball joints being one. And also, I will let you know now, these calipers, although in the in an earlier video where we were changing the pads and the, on the rear and we decided with the fronts that um, they weren't too bad, um, with these they look all right, but actually the pistons in them, because I got them out and uh, played about with them, cleaned up the sliders, but the pistons are just a bit sticky, so they're obviously getting a bit rusty on the inside of the of the pistons inside these are the twin piston calipers so if you have a look over here i have bought two new calipers these were surprisingly affordable um about 70 something pound for the pair so yeah you can rebuild the originals but the amount of time and things it would take and the way we need to get on with this project now uh, I've gone for the replacement. So there's another one in here. Well, another box. You'll believe me. There's two calipers to go on. New uh, ball joint is here. The lower ball joint. And get that on. It took the whole shaft out as we were already there rather than splitting the hub. Um, and we can just put it on and slide the new ball joint in. Once again, it's the next day. Turns out not everything goes so smoothly, right? Let me explain. Everything we had trouble with yesterday in the end was caused by this. This is the inner spring clip or, or holds the, for the diff seal. Um, basically holds the rubber seal to shape. But basically it wasn't feasible to get that back in on the inside of the seal without potentially dropping that in the diff and it just wasn't really happening because you can't get it you know stretched out enough to get it back in on the back it's just impossible really well i think it is anyway so new diff seal better safe than sorry we wouldn't want it to leak and then have to take everything apart again would we but essentially all the suspension is on the car now so that part is done just got a few things like to change these front calipers left to do and things which will happen next week when that diff seal arrives but yes there was also the <laughs> added bonus that we had to fix this this lovely Land Rover here um, let me show you the damage report it was a well destroyed CV um, on the front axle so whip that out new one went in So it's not just Mitsubishi we work on, as everybody says, you can see new one in there, been for a test drive, works well. So my mate's happy with that. Um, but in the meantime, let's get back to the office so I can go with, through with you the costs of all the suspension setup and we can uh, add up the totals and see where we are in this build. Let's go. So firstly, let's start with the fact that we um, uncovered a few more things that needed addressing whilst doing uh, the suspension upgrades which as you know are the calipers we need two new front calipers uh, the lower ball joint 
the top ball joints and the diff seal in the end there. Uh, that actually came to an extra 117.17. Calipers were 70.95 for the pair. Lower ball joint was 19.56. Top ball joint was 18.20, and the diff seal was 8.46. So that's got to be added on. So let's do that now. Moving on to the suspension components uh, from Euro 4x4. Starting with, let's go from most expensive um, first, which was the Kony heavy duty or heavy track shock absorbers. And for four of those, it came in at 375.22. Next was the springs, so Kings Australia, Kings Springs. They came in for the four at £331.40. Um, we also had to pay, because they were coming from France, a delivery charge on there of £57.76. And of course, uh, <laughs> Brexit, thanks very much, uh, import duty, 152.83. But in the end, not too bad really, it doesn't make much difference because you don't have to pay the French um, equivalent of VAT uh, which actually was a bit more, so that was removed and we just had to pay the UK VAT, so there we go. It actually works out a little bit better for some reason in this case. Therefore, the total for suspension parts came in at 917.21 for those shocks, the springs, the uh, delivery and duty and etc. Well then, that brings our new grand total to 9,174.69. Yep, getting all that much closer to the £10,000 uh, budget limit. So um, I'm quite interested to see how we get on over the coming weeks with the uh, the upcoming episodes. You know, to see how close are we going to get. Are we going to be above it, just under it, or bang on? I really don't know at the moment. So yeah, really interested to find out what we end up on. Guys, please do give this video a like subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss any of our videos, all of that really helps, so much appreciated, thank you. Um, otherwise, next week uh, we are moving on to the undersealing side of things, so yeah, really good, good time to get things protected on the underside of the vehicle, coming up to winter and all that, so yeah, we're going to go through all of that in detail, the products we're using and how we prep it and apply it and uh, going forward and things so yeah you don't want to miss that one um, but until then uh, have a great week ahead and uh, yeah we'll be seeing you very soon